Hi there! Welcome to this tutorial on evaluating websites, a how-to guide for middle school students. Be honest. Have you ever left an assignment until the night before and then realized that you had forgotten your research material in your locker? Yeah, kind of a drag. And just how understanding was your teacher when you explained what happened the next day? Not so much, right? So back to the night before scenario again. While the bad news may mean having to start over, which also probably means you won't forget your work in your locker next time, right? The good news is that access to the internet means all is not lost. You can use information available online to complete your research. But it's important to remember that there is an endless amount of information out there, which can make it a little overwhelming to find exactly what you want, let alone what you need. And it's also important to remember that not all websites are created equal. Just because it's there doesn't make it true or useful or accurate. All things your information needs to be to help you get an A on your assignment. Websites, unlike traditional print materials such as books and magazines, don't have to go through a long editorial process involving a whole army of people proofreading, checking facts, and proofreading some more to make sure the final product is accurate and correct. Remember, anyone can have a website. In fact, you probably have one yourself. So it's important that as an internet user, you are able to evaluate the quality and reliability of information presented. So, time to find out what to look for. Authority. So what does authority have to do with anything? Well, what word do you see in the word authority? Author, right? So authority has to do with the author or authors of the site. You want to make sure that the person or organization that is responsible for creating the website has experience with or is an expert in the subject matter. So here are some questions you can ask. Is the author of the site clearly identified? Is the author well respected or an expert? Is there contact information for the author? For example, look for a contact us section for an email address or phone number. This is a good way to find out more information if some of those other questions can't be answered. When trying to decide on the authority of a site, sometimes you can tell by the organization publishing or sponsoring the website. For example, the Government of Canada would be a good example of an authoritative publisher or sponsor. So, whether it's sponsor or publisher, you can ask similar questions to those listed previously for an author. In some cases, you can tell by the author's credentials how authoritative they are. For example, degrees, diplomas, and certificates can show a certain level of qualification or certainly education. Anyway, let's move on. Next on the list is objectivity. Objectivity has to do with whether or not the information is presented in a fair and balanced way by offering different points of view. But before you can decide whether or not a website is objective or not, you need to make sure you understand the purpose of the website. Is the purpose to entertain? To try and sway public opinion? To sell something? For example, do you think Pepsi's website would provide information on the negative aspects of drinking carbonated beverages? Of course not. Therefore, the website has bias. Its job is to sell you a product, not make you have second thoughts about it. But we understand that about advertising. Bias isn't always so obvious, so you need to make sure you carefully evaluate the information on a website to decide whether or not it's giving you both sides of the story. So here are some questions you can ask about objectivity. Is the purpose of the website clear? Can you tell if the information on the site is fact or opinion? Is the website biased or balanced in the way that it presents information? Is the website trying to sell you something? And finally, what is the website not telling you? And this can be tricky, so sometimes you need to look at more than one source and compare. So check this out. If can we the Canadian Wind Energy Association, its purpose is to promote wind energy. Just how objective do you think the site will be? 
Do you think it will outline the positive and negative aspects of wind energy? After all, who does can we represent? Here, we need to be able to decide whether the information provided is fact or opinion. What do you think? Oh, here's a tip. Look at the website address for clues to help you assess the objectivity and authority of a website. For example, government websites often include the domain .gov, or in Canada, we use .gc. Universities, colleges, and other educational institutions may use .edu in their address, though we don't tend to use that a lot in Canada. Professional organizations and associations often use .org in their website addresses, and .com, of course, was initially used for commercial or business type sites, although many websites often use .com. Remember, these aren't rules, it's important to always evaluate each website individually. Oh, one last thing. Watch for the tilde in a website address. That wavy line thing? The tilde is usually followed by a person's name. What this means is that particular page is a personal page. And as we each have our personal opinions, keep this in mind when evaluating objectivity. Next on our list of criteria is currency. One of the great things about website information is that it can be updated easily and frequently. Think about how often news sites need to be revised. However, that doesn't mean it always happens. Some sites have been kicking around the internet for over a decade without being touched. Depending on the subject matter, that can provide more than a few problems for someone looking for up-to-date information. Therefore, the currency, or how up-to-date a site is, can be very important. When assessing the currency of a site, here are some questions. When was the site created? When was the site last updated? Are the links up to date or have they expired? Dead links can be a sign that the site hasn't been updated recently. Look at this example. Here we see that this particular page hasn't been updated since 2002. That's a decade. And here? Obviously, news sites need to be kept current. This article shows when it was first posted, as well as when it was updated. Ah, Dead links are so frustrating! And can be a sign that a website is out of date. Anyway, on with our list of criteria. Now we're going to look at accuracy. Obviously, information, and the way in which it's presented, needs to be accurate. It has to be correct. So that means everything from the spelling and grammar to the actual content of the website must be clear, error-free, and well-researched. So how can you double check the accuracy? Well, here's some questions. Is the correct grammar and spelling used? Is there a reference list or links to other websites to show where the information came from? This is a good way to double check that the information is accurate and will also show that the information has been researched. Another question to ask is whether or not you are able to verify or confirm the information in another book or website or magazine. For example, this website, the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus, really? Hmm. Might be a good idea to check some other resources to confirm the accuracy of this information, don't you think? Finally, let's look at the usefulness of a website. A website might have everything else going for it, authority, currency, accuracy, objectivity, but if it's not the right website for you as a middle school student, then it probably won't be useful. Think about it. Are you going to get the type of information you need from a website aimed at grade one students? Or what about a website for university students? Probably not in either of those cases. One would contain too little information and the other would probably include a whole bunch of words that would be hard to understand. At least it would be for me. It's a little like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You need to find a website that's just right for you. You also want a website that's been designed in a way that makes it easy to access the information. And speaking of being able to access the information, you want a website that loads quickly and regularly. 
We already know that those 404 not found messages are frustrating, and so are pages which load slowly. You don't want your valuable research time wasted. So here's some questions. Does the website load quickly? Is it easy to read and navigate? Has it been designed clearly and logically? And is this the right website for you? Are you the intended audience? In this example, who is the intended audience for each of these science websites? Which one is just right for you? Don't forget, it needs to be just right to be useful. So just to review, it's important to be able to evaluate websites in order to make sure the information you're getting is good information. Using the questions presented here and the criteria of authority, objectivity, currency, accuracy, and usefulness will help you in your assessment. So happy researching, and thanks for watching.